Insta360 have just released a new version of their Insta360 Studio software and it is the biggest update to the software since it was released years ago. The new update has features that were only previously available in the Insta360 phone app. You can now combine multiple clips, you can add transitions, add text, music, along with some other usability updates. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through all of the new changes, all of the updates in the Insta360 Studio version five, showing you exactly what's new and how to use all of the new features. So I'm also updating my ultimate Insta360 video course with advanced updates on all of these new features. So if you wanna check that out, there's a discount in the description, but let's get into this tutorial. Okay guys, here is the Insta360 Studio and right now it looks pretty much the same as it did before. As we can see, we can drag along here and uh, reframe our clips down here with the, um, the keyframe tab. And then at the sides we have these options and on the other side we have our clips that I've dragged in. So it looks pretty much the same right now, but there is a whole new area if we go up here. As you can see before, this these two tabs were not here. There were no tabs here. So we have media, which we're on now, and then we have the project tab. So let's click on that. And this is where all of the new stuff is. This is where you can combine your videos together. This is where you can add music, text, transitions. So this makes the Insta360 Studio a much more powerful video editor. It means you don't have to use a program like Premiere Pro to just combine your videos and really to make a full video. We can make a full video with different uh, features without having to use any other program. So I'm gonna show you exactly how that's done if I just remove everything here and I'm gonna take you through all of the options, what they can do and uh, a quick tutorial on how we can edit something basic with these new features. So this is the project tab and first we'll start here. You can see we have project media, general media, which is media from that it's found basically on your laptop that's compatible and temporary, which I think is just the media that's being used at the moment. You can have multiple projects using this uh, project mode. So if we start a new project, we can see here, we have some options. You can choose what aspect ratio you wanna start off in. However, you can change that as well. But I think the most important thing here is that you can have proxy files made directly when you make the uh, new project. It will take a while to load, but that means your files will have a proxy and will run a lot smoother. So we can see here, I've already made some projects. I've been playing around with this, um, but we'll stick to this test one for now. So you can see when you choose your media to import, then it's placed in this area here. Now we can drag one of these into the timeline, drop it, and then you'll see it comes up on the main screen here and you can run your mouse along and see here as well. Now I will say before I continue, when you reframe in the media tab, that will apply here. So when you drag the same media here, the reframings, um, the keyframes will be applied here as well. However, if you wanted to, you can also reframe here. You click on the, uh, the video and you have the reframing options here. You can either do it manually, like we can see here, or you can just drag along the screen like this. And then the keyframe will automatically be applied here at the bottom. So let's get to some of the more interesting stuff. I think one of the most, uh, the requested features for the Insta360 Studio was the ability to add multiple clips. Well, we can definitely do that now. We have our first clip here, drag our second clip, and it is added to the timeline. Now if it's a particularly long clip, or if you want to add many, you can just zoom out on the timeline. And why not, let's just add two or three more. So you can add as many as you want. You can set it to automatically clip to the next one, auto snapping, so that means it will just automatically attach itself to the next uh, closest video if you want to have a couple of multiple sets of clips separated from each other then you just click on this and that will turn the main track magnet off and we can drag another clip and add it with some blank space in between but i think for this i'm just going to leave that on so it's just literally transitioning very uh, in a basic way you can also crop these if you wanted 
on the timeline. Let's just make them all a bit shorter. So there you go, combining multiple clips, really, really easy. Also guys, if you wanted to change any of the reframing uh, that you've done, just click on the reframing little yellow buttons and you can do so um, by changing your options here or by dragging on the screen. And you also have the option of changing keyframe transitions as well, which can have an effect on how your video flows. But thankfully, we can also, in the new version of the studio, add our own transitions, of which there are quite a few, and they really do make your videos a lot more dynamic and a lot just better looking if you um, use these. So we have them all listed here. They also are listed by kind of the type of transition they are. So we can click through these. And you can have a preview just by hovering over them. You can see what it's roughly going to do. Depending on the type of video you're creating will depend on the kind of transition you have. I won't go through all of them now because that will be a bit much, but you know, there's plenty to choose from and they all work really well. Let's add some just so you can see. Let's add this zoom transition. I think this might work quite well. So I've dragged along and added the zoom transition. Now I can just drag along with my mouse and kind of see how that looks. And um, yeah, it definitely works. So let's go ahead and play and see what that looks like. Well, let's skip to here. So there we go. It's definitely better than just a normal cut transition. And if we click on where the transition is, we can also do some adjustments. So I could make it last a lot longer or I can make it very quick. Let's see what happens when I make the transition shorter. Sometimes there's a bit of lag when using the studio with these transitions because it's kind of loading them so it will look a lot smoother when you export. The transitions will definitely be a lot smoother than the preview here in the studio. So we can see some other transitions up here. There's quite a few and they are all uh, you know pretty smooth and they could be useful depending on the kind of shots you want to get. I'm gonna show, so I'm going to export some videos and show you what the transitions look like, what the different ones, uh, some examples of what they look like because it's just easier. I think overall there's uh, about 28 or maybe 30 different transitions, so there's quite a lot to choose from and uh, I don't think you'll ever run out. It will definitely make your videos look a lot more creative than if you just did some basic cuts. But let's take a look at what else there is in this new version of the studio. We can add music. There's a quite a large music library. Um, you do have to just pr press this download button every time you want to use one, so let's just start downloading some of them now. And then they're also grouped here by the kind of vibe they are, I guess, what they're... And it's really easy to add them to your clips, to your video, just uh, once you've downloaded. It will see here, you'll have the plus sign. Press that. And it will be added here at the bottom, which is where the track is. Now, I don't know if these are copyright free. So I don't know if you're going to be able to use them on YouTube. Facebook, Meta, Instagram without uh, raising the copyright flag for those videos doesn't mean you doesn't necessarily mean you can't use them, but it may mean you you can't be monetized. So for the sake of this video, I don't want to get uh, demonetized or have a strike, a copyright strike. So I'm not gonna play them. Just know that they're quite high quality. They're not. Uh, super basic. I think they could be uh, great for travel vlogs or personal videos, but I'm not entirely sure if they are uh, copyright free, so I'm not going to play them right now. And finally, we have the text options. Now, there's a uh, plenty. If you've if you've used the Insta360 app, then you'll probably recognize some of these. These are the same kinds of text animations we have on the app. So if I kind of go into my timeline. Just select any of them. Once again, you just have to press this download button if you want to use them. But let's just say I wanted to use this one. Drag it to the timeline where you want the animation to appear. 
you can then drag it for as, uh, for it to last as long as you want. It could be the whole video, but we're just going to do it for a few seconds. Now, if I press play, that pops up. Oh, I'm going to delete that soundtrack. Now, this has the uh, predetermined text, but we can change this here on the right hand side. We can choose whatever we want. So I'm going to put welcome to, to London. There we go, because this is London where I live. So uh, again, if we play that. the text comes up. Now the only issue I have with this text is that there's no um, exit animation when you go it just kind of disappears. It doesn't animate away. So I think that is a shame. I hope they could add some um, exit animations as well. So there's plenty to choose from here. Plenty of different styles. And if we go to basic you can just select a default text, which would be good for um, captioning. If you wanted to caption your videos, it's just a basic text box. If I was talking, then we could add the text here. We can change the size. We click on this box, change the size. We can move it anywhere we want. We could put it there so it's um, the correct position for a caption. And we can also change the color. There we go, maybe yellow would be good. So yeah, there's uh, plenty to choose from with the text. Um, I would, in the future, like to see there be maybe a background option for this to add a background to the text so it's more bold and maybe some more fonts. So at the very least, you could definitely caption your clips if you wanted to add them for Instagram stories, reels. This is very important for TikTok as well, adding captions. Another, another feature that the new version of the Insta360 Studio brings is some more options with the speed settings. If you wanted to create hyperlapses, time shifts, which are very popular. Now we have more control over the speed of our videos. So if we go here to the speed button, we can see there is more. Uh, there are more options. We can do custom speeds. There are a lot more different speed options, including a custom speed option, as well as frame interpolation, which may make a difference to how smooth your videos look. So that's it, guys. Um, there are obviously some uh, other editing features we can see here. We can change the aspect ratio, but this was also available on the last version. It's just also available in this project tab. In this project tab, you also have the ability to change the uh, direction lock on and off add the stitching options if you're using any um, lens guards, optimize the stitching and add some uh, extra color or image processing. We can add clarity plus, color plus, the new slow, mo uh, the new motion ND which adds motion blur to your moving video. So this can all be done in the project tab as well. Once you've combined all of your clips, added transitions, music, everything you wanted to, then you can export your project from here. You can see this big yellow export button. Just click on that and you'll see the export options pop up. Now, I recommend, now I've always recommended to everyone to upscale their clips to 4K in the export. Now, usually you had to type this in every single time you had to adjust the um, export resolution, but now there are some default options, including 4K. Also, if you wanted to create your own export option, which you wanted to reuse over and over again, you can create a preset and then just select that preset. So it does save a little bit of time. I can't tell you how many times I've had to type 3840 by 2160 to export literally every clip I've ever done. So now I don't need to do that. So that's it guys, that's the update for the Insta360 Studio, bringing you all of these, uh, probably the biggest update it's ever had, bringing you some features that were, very, were available in the app. I'm sure some people will be disappointed that they don't have some of the shot lab or the automatic editors that are available in the app and all of those automatic uh, unique features. But so far, I think that would be a bit much for this desktop program, which I'm sure is quite expensive to develop and run and keep running smoothly. So, so while it's not perfect, it's still a very decent editor considering that it is free. If you want some advanced tutorials on how to use the Insta360 Studio along with all of these new features, how to create some really impressive effects that you may have seen on YouTube, then check out my video course. It's called the Ultimate Insta360 Video Course. It's available now and there is a discount. Editing 360 videos into these kinds of unique clips can be really difficult, but I make it super easy, step by step. I've had lots of good feedback, so I would be grateful if you could check that out in the description. 
And there's also a free trial so you can check that out as well. Let me know what you think of this new version of the studio and any extra features you might want to see in the future. But until next time guys, I'll see you around. Bye.